the opening of Rob Zombie's Halloween is the worst scene in cinema history. And it might be. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. it might okay. actually. Here's every bad scene yeah. in every movie. <laughs> and then, whoop. <laughs> Here's uh, the opening scene to Rob Zombie's Halloween. Motherfucking goddamn orange peel beef. <laughs> Walk out. Walk out. Reboot. Walk out. Walk out. <laughs> That's right. right. <laughs> it's reboot walkout time again. Yes, it is. <laughs> For the well, first time. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to uh, One Fucking Hour, everybody. Of course, the show where we normally talk about one goddamn movie and we have just one fucking hour to do it. But tonight we're doing something a little different. As it is the third week of One, one Fucking October, October, our month long blitz of horror movies for the month of October. And tonight's episode, y'all, is one fucking hour on the horror movie reboots and remakes that we fucking hate. I'm Evan Husney, and here to talk uh, with us and me and you about this wonderful subject is Big T, Tom Fitzgerald. What's going on, T? Hey, 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 here we go. Here we fucking go. Uh, all the way to the right, uh, we got Mr. Marcus Herring. What's going on? What's up, everybody? Man, this is one of those episodes where the prep is just painful. <laughs> painful. <laughs> I know. It is. Painful prepping. <laughs> <laughs> it really is, man. It really is brutal. Um, I, and yeah. Yeah, we're going to get into that. Uh, Agreed. And uh, here, back with us, back to back, special guest here. We have our child <laughs> abuse uh, trauma uh, correspondent, um, who I'm calling reporting yeah, from the reporting. shelter. We're gonna need her. <laughs> who is now officially our reboot correspondent? We got Ramy Bennett here. What's going on, Ramy? Say hello. Um, hi. Good to see you guys. Yeah, it's been a few days of just like frustration and pain and anger watching these shitty fast forwarding. <laughs> Yeah. A lot of fast forwarding. Um, yes, fast forwarding. Yeah, right. uh, but uh, FF. Yeah, it is FF time. But uh, so yeah, so let's let's get into this. Um, you know, we have a tradition here on the show. Previously, we've done two at different episodes um, uh, about uh, the movies we hate. We've tackled uh, part one, part two on the show, and now we're getting into because obviously it is the month of October. Here we are. We're talking about. Not just any old horror movies that we hate, but of course, the remakes, the reboots, whatever you want to call them. That's what we're here to talk about tonight. So strap in. Of, to be clear, of about the last two decades. Yeah. 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 Right. Of course. Of course. Because it's not John Carpenter's a thing. You know, we don't have some hot take on that or anything tonight. We're talking about all of the, you know, new gen, horrible, terrible decision making, you know, uh, crazy ass, terrible films. Uh, that we're going to get into, of course. But first, I thought before we get into the show, uh, as per usual, a couple of business-oriented plugs here. Um, guys, you had another EXP show uh, this past Tuesday. Um, sure did. And I bet that was... Uh, <laughs> how did that go? <laughs> a lot Big of fun. walkouts, actually. No! <laughs> yeah. No. Well, it was my reboot mix, so I guess... Uh. <laughs> Uh, all right. Yeah, no, it was great. Uh, a lot of folks came. I think Bigfoot made an appearance, which oh. was pretty cool. I guess he walked down, walked down from uh, Highway uh, 101 or something, and uh, <laughs> he just you know stopped by, had a La Croix, uh, sort of. <laughs> and um, it was cool. But and then so and just to be clear, it's every Tuesday, so that uh, the 24th next Tuesday and the 31st Halloween. Yeah, are uh, the next uh, two, the third and fourth in the series. Uh, the last one is a big, literally a party. Huge uh, Halloween party. So, uh, mm-hmm. Halloween party. So make make your plans uh, at this weird old, um, you know, like religious theosophy center <laughs> in this nice neighborhood here in Los Feliz and yeah. uh, hang out with us on the grounds and the courtyard yeah. and um, in the auditorium, too. We're going to have a DJ cut chemist and myself doing an audio video show. So Amazing. that should be fun, you know. So, yeah. So, yeah, Tom and Marcus together uh, work together on EXP TV, which is a 24 hour streaming channel where all things wild and weird, like the coolest shit you've never heard of, but you you love uh, is um, it plays 24 hours uh, on EXP TV dot org and also 
on their Twitch channel, uh, twitch.com uh, slash expTV underscore. And uh, they got, uh, so you can watch it 24 hours a day. It's cr- incredible. It should always be on in the background, but you can see them mm-hmm. live <laughs> at the Philosophical Research Society yeah. uh, this Tuesday, the 24th, coming Tuesday and uh, October 31st, man. So tickets in the description if you want to check that out in Los Angeles for all the LA peeps. Um, yeah. Come hang out with us. Yeah. 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 You, uh, yeah. One, uh, in IRL. IRL. All the one fucking hour <laughs> listeners are heading out there, I hear. I hear a lot of them have been showing up. <laughs> So, we have um, been seeing yeah, some, yeah. It's that's fun. good. That's great. Uh, also, last shout out is the one fucking hour. <laughs> Bigfoot Patreon. watches, so maybe that's why he came. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Bigfoot likes one fucking hour. He told. Me. Go ahead. <laughs> All right, last shout out, of course, is the one fucking hour Patreon. Um, if you like what we're doing here and you want to support the show, it's the best way to do so. Uh, Patreon.com slash one fucking hour. It's just five bucks a month. It gives you access to all of our audio commentary tracks. We just dropped, finally, our latest audio commentary track, which was on Alejandro Jodorowsky's Holy Mountain. Guys, I had a fucking blast with that, right? I mean... That was yeah, super that, fun, yeah. That was so Special fun just film. to go to town with that movie. Impossible. Impossible film to cover on this show in one hour. It's impossible. So we... we Great we, movie to watch with your friends, though. Totally. Yeah, really fun. Half the reason people <laughs> fuck with this is his look right there. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like, that's, like, <laughs> transcendently... <laughs> Yeah. Godhead seventies look because he's because it looks like cocaine disco, like you know like guru like wizard, like, yeah yeah exactly like yeah. like psychedelic Merlin like angel <laughs> dust smoking like at the discotheque. We went deep into like yeah. all things amazing in terms of all the different setups and shots and set pieces and decisions and it was amazing. So check that out and um, there's also bonus episodes uh, up on the Patreon and it, you also get 24 hour early access to every episode of the show. Um, and uh, you also, if you want, can scroll under the video and if you're watching this on YouTube, click the join button and become a Momin. Same perks, same price, five bucks a month. Either one is the best way to support the show. We appreciate your patronage. Thank you so much. Again, patreon.com slash one fucking hour. All right, guys, let's get into the main event here for tonight. Here we are talking about <laughs> one fucking ding. hour on the reboot <laughs> walkouts. Um, walkout. <laughs> <laughs> I remember just, we, to be yeah. clear that gesture it always comes to my mind it's you know a baseball game and yeah. a guy's getting thrown mm-hmm. out on the field and it's just like <laughs> you know like hey 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 goodbye yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's the it's the international symbol of rejecting a reboot that you got stuck in at a movie theater. Like, yes. I'm out. Reboot, <laughs> right. walk out. Exactly. Out. So yeah. uh You're I with actually your friends. I actually remember we were all um you know, we were all at our favorite establishment. We were at Toy on Sunset, you know, in Los Angeles. Uh, <laughs> in our, our favorite rock and roll hangout. It's kind of our rock and roll headquarters, I think, in Los Angeles. Yeah. Um, yep. And we were sort of talking about just all of the different remakes and reboots that, uh, you know, of the horror <laughs> ilk that we had survived, seen, or walked out of. We're going to get into, especially with mm-hmm. Raimi. We're going to get into that here as the show starts. But I thought we would just kind of just give th- just give the viewers before we start the clock, like, what are we really talking about here? Let's define this because mm-hmm. there's some subjectivity as to what a reboot is and what a remake is and, you know, all yeah. that stuff. And so, you know, this is it's tonight- really a confounding term kind of right. Like it's, uh, you know, it's basically kind of like it's a newish term for yeah. like remake. I feel like. You know, I read that the the 2000s were like the peak years yep. for remakes, like that decade, totally. and they, they were made like like in 2005 there was like 33 remakes, Jeez. and like you've never heard someone go like, oh, the remake is better. You know, it's not like, uh, you know, the book is always better than the movie. You've never ever heard someone say, oh, that the remake was better, unless it's like you know, the thing mm-hmm. or something. You know, yeah. But I feel like it was just like everyone was tired of it, and they came up with this new marketing name you know they rebranded it but they also did a little bit of a spin on it because a reboot like it's basically like a remake and a sequel at the same time sometimes sometimes yes. but other times <laughs> yeah. it's like just a straight up sequel or sometimes it's just like a new take on it with no, no relation to the other ones and that's also right. a reboot so a it's very confusing it's, uh, yeah yeah reimagining and it's you know it's modern it's a computer term you know and i think it is the idea where it's like well what does it mean in computers it means like Let's like mm. this got stale. This isn't working. Yeah. The franchise 
crashed quote yeah. unquote yeah mm-hmm. so like let's let's do what you need to do which is reboot it yeah and uh you know we're gonna talk about halloween and that's actually not the worst example of uh how the reboot word is applied because it's had a bumpy ride as a franchise right for example but it's I, also I, go ahead Ramey, go ahead i was gonna say it's just like represents like an extremely like cynical era in filmmaking you know where it was like bankrupt of any original ideas trying to manipulate the fan base who might come back for this who love mm-hmm. the old movies and then bring in a new audience and just fuck everything up right in the process. fan service fan well, service it, it, you know was really developing with this yeah. uh you know this concept yes yeah it, it's, it's, it, also- it's sort of just look we're there living it now too right i mean it's like that's just, this is just the reality now is that they're just going to keep rebooting franchises i, I think a pet, a, a pet cemetery yeah. just came out yeah. Like well, you, yeah, I can't even keep track of it. We're 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 going to get into those, but it is also <laughs> no, no. But I'm saying like there's. I just realized there's another pet cemetery that's out like this week or something. Oh, I didn't the even know. um the prequel. Yeah, the prequel. There's a brand <laughs> right. new one. Like, yeah, there's right. a brand new one. I didn't yep. even. I'm not. I can't even keep up. I can't even keep up. People See, don't even talk about movies. They talk about like franchises, spiritual you know I mean? like, sequels. Yeah. Okay, hang on. So what? J- just what I want to say is that you know, yeah, this is this is the most cynical era, you know, of of filmmaking you know in terms of this industry because it's also uh like oh this classic timeless thing is outdated and we have to modernize it you know we have to Mm -hmm. bring it up to the speed into where our you know into what social media and cell phones and internet and yeah you know and it never works and jackass and rock and roll it's so words it's yeah. Yeah, right. it, it is it is soulless and what you're going to see tonight you know is where a lot of these classic horror films that we're going to talk about like you know the classics they're they're elegant they're restrained they're glossy you know and then yeah. now we're going to see everybody you mean read. boring <laughs> 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 well you know tom they're not they're not boring they're um, oh some people are like think people, it's kind of slow kind of slow um <laughs> okay. but uh, uh but but me. yeah so okay. it's 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 you know it's it, so now these filmmakers are misinterpreting them to be these gritty faux grindhouse you know Ramy, you put it great last night where you said the movies we're talking about tonight are the distressed abercrombie jeans versions <sighs> of the horror mm-hmm. classics oh. Mm-hmm. It's distressed gene cinema. <laughs> yes. Boom. Yes. It yes. Is. yes. That's, it is. that's 100%. That's it the is. perfect analogy. It is. It and is. I love that. But my little thing, just as we're talking about this, and we can move towards the actual films, is um, we should. I always call it like, did we see the same film here? You yeah. know, like when I'm thinking of like right. the, the producers of the, the, the reboot, the remake, yep. like, wait, wait, what did you see when you saw the, <laughs> like Texas Chance of Massacre? Like, huh? Like, yeah. what? that's what you, that's your takeaway? Yeah. You know, like what is going on here? You know, that's what always gets me, you know? Uh, yeah. And, and uh, what did these people, if they're calling themselves appreciators or fans, like, what kind of like connection did they have if this is like like you said if this is how they're interpreting not a genuine it. product yeah, yeah. Of, mm-hmm. of their yeah. Uh, it's of, of their perspective yeah right I, I think the cheap disposability of the films too like kind of influences the the decisions of the filmmakers who are doing the reboots too because it's like I feel like somebody like you know uh, Friedkin when he's making The Exorcist, he's like, "This is gonna be like a film of one of my oeuvre." Yeah. You know, like I'm gonna put everything into it. You know, and it's yeah. gonna be like you know an original idea. You know, but I think over time people realize there's gonna be like reboot forever from now on, and I'm just mm. making yeah. one shitty version. Yeah. And they're gonna make another stupid fucking Spider-Man movie saga. You know, three years from now they're gonna reboot Spider-Man again. So the ones I'm making are just like a stopgap for now. Yeah, it's just it's, a, it's product. Like, it's a brand. It's, it's cheap the, like TV used to be. Yeah, you it know? is. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's it's not yeah. about the art. It's about the intellectual property. But what we're really talking about tonight, okay? I just want to break this down. Then we got to get to the sh- actual show. But, oh yeah. But but what it is we're talking about, you know, one fucking hour. Normally, if you're tuning into our show, we are talking about the masterful creative choices that go into the 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 masterful instincts of filmmakers that go into making these you know like usually most of the movies we talk about and all the good decisions and the, and the, and the craft tonight we're getting into some of the all-time worst instincts that have ever <laughs> ever yeah. ever because there's being cynical 
and making product, <laughs> but I think it really st- t- goes over the line and starts getting weirdly bad yeah. when someone thinks that they are a bit of an auteur mm. and that they are going to try some stylistic flourishes and, and put their own spin on, yeah. on the uh, franchise. You know, it's like you're saying, though, but they're uh, talentless yeah. uh, and they have bad taste. And, yeah, and, and last thing I'll say is, let's get into it, is why this is so egregious. And I think the horror reboots are the worst because they're horror movies and horror movies have been bad for 30 years. But the thing is, yeah. is that um, this is also giving people the the actual license, the permission, the official legal permission to destroy mm-hmm. sacred yeah. material, uh, and that's why it's so you know disrespectful yeah. and traumatizing. I think for all of us to watch it, which we're going to get into right now. So, so with that it's being the said, desecration. Desecration. It is. It is. Yeah. Yeah. So mm-hmm. let's let's get into atrocities. It is atrocities. Mm-hmm. All right. So let's get into the hour here. <laughs> Uh, we could do an hour setup for an hour show, I'm sure. So <laughs> yeah. right, I'm going to start the clock. Here we go. All right. Uh, sorry. Boom. Okay. The clock is on, and I'm going to kick this off to you, Ramy, because I, I, you know, w- when we first met, you told me about, you know, the ultimate reboot walkout story uh of of your own and i think it would only be fitting because i mean the whole idea of reboot walkout kind of originated with you and your experiences because you compulsively are a completist you you masochistically well, see all of these reboots well and, and, and to be clear <laughs> unlike the rest of us you would go to a place in which you would then be able to, to walk, walk out <laughs> exactly like for all of us it's yeah. reboot <laughs> Press stop. On yeah. the couch. And, you know, <laughs> You're right. You, know, the the you, you would go <laughs> yes. to a place in which yes. one would yes. potentially walk out, and, yes. which is awesome. And I think that's that's where this this all reboot walkout thing came from because I was kind of talking about with you guys like the pure masochism and actual yeah. insanity that it takes Hardcore. for me to keep on doing this over and over well, it's you like know the insane. definition and of it, insanity yeah and you, and Evan, you always yeah. said the definition of insanity is like thinking you're you're doing the same thing and thinking you're going to get a different result exactly. and it's like weird it's like i and it's almost like i have amnesia and i'm like i'm gonna do it i'm gonna buy the ticket right. i'm going and then i'm like <laughs> i have a fucking like psychic meltdown <laughs> panic attack and and it's like not a joke like i'm not exaggerating and so i think like part of the reason to like explain a little bit like or maybe to try to understand for myself why i have these reactions is because like these movies to us like we saw them when when we were young they were so important to us like they were just like like we were in love with them you know it's like it's they were sacred and like it was like we Mm -hmm. felt like they were a part of us and that it was like something so unique and special and like to have someone actually just shit all over that like it feels like it just feels like a a violation like an egregious violation and like um so the the one that evan we're actually evan i think you called me randomly after oh, yeah. i got back from having like almost passing out oh, when i yeah. went to see the pet cemetery reboot oh. and i had to, and that's the reason i told you about it because i had to explain why right. i was in this state, state of happened. mind i could barely speak and well, he was like what is going on right. like i was like dizzy lying on the floor so just to this story some people know the story i know joey knows this story oh yeah uh, joey is oh but Shout um joey. Wh- what happened is i got sucked in and we'll talk about this. I got sucked into the marketing ploys. I got hmm. tricked somehow. I don't know. Well, you love the book. I, I, I love the book. And I was rereading the book at the time, coincidentally, right before this reboot came out. Hmm. Someone invited me to a screening of it where like the directors were going to be there, like some of the actors. Uh, and mm. I was like, and I kind of was like, you know what? Maybe this is just going to be fun. It's just going to be like an adaptation. Maybe they'll do some cool stuff with the Stephen King book that they didn't do before. And, you know, the the original one, it's it's not a masterpiece. It's just like a fun, goofy, you know, good. So it's like, it's not as if we're taking something sacred in the same way, like Poltergeist or yeah, Halloween. Yeah. It's well, Pet you thought maybe that. Well, you, you, I, I actually remember you saying that like this could this could be a movie that should be remade or rebooted. Because it has a lot more potential right. because of the book. Yeah, right? and I was like, that could be kind of interesting because it's like that's the kind of movie actually that is prime for a remake if there was an interesting person doing it. Like, sure. Mm-hmm. Um, so I 
I go, I'm like excited. And I have like, I bring a bunch of friends with me. I'm like in the lobby saying hi to people. We're like getting all excited. And I'm like sitting there and like, as the movie's like washing over me, like my, my mood just starts to like drop. And then like my expectations are like dropping and like, my my vision actually starts to like blur at one point wow. and like there's shit that's going on in this movie that I'm just like like I want to like sc- like get up and like scream and like they're changing yeah. the entire source yeah. material like they they basically like you were saying Tom decided like I'm going to re-envision this and like do something clever and instead of actually being more faithful to the book which is an amazing source material they changed the entire fucking thing so like the little the little boy doesn't even die they have like the older sister die and then she comes back as like an annoying creepy like ballet dancing zombie Uh, and the whole movie uh, the whole movie is and so i i basically was like literally my vision starts to blur i'm like freaking out i'm like my heart is palpitating i i get (laughs) up and i'm like I start stumbling like out of the theater and my friends and my sister are like, what is she doing? And I just literally, I can't even see. I run out on the street. I jump on the train and I get on the train in like the wrong direction. I'm on the F train, like heading to like Sunset Park. It takes me so long. I didn't tell anyone I was leaving. And then finally after the movie, they're like, Ramey, where, what, where the fuck are you? And like, what was that? Yeah. And so it was like really weird. Like, obviously it was extreme, you know? Yeah. Um, Yeah. And th- I've had it, I'll t- talk about this later when we bring up some of the other films, but it's something reoccurring in my life yeah. that's happened to me before. Like when I was a little kid, I went to see Interview with a Vampire and I was like a huge fan of the Anne Rice book. And I actually left crying like hysterically <laughs> and my parents couldn't console me. And I was like, yeah. you know, why would they, anyway, it was like, it felt like a crime and it felt wow. like, like, wow. like really sad. Um, so anyway, that, that's, that's kind of what, and, okay <laughs> it's terrible it's, it's i can i can i can i can attest it's it's horrible as also a fan of the book the book is amazing it's it's incredible just you know book about grief and you know the loss of a child and some of the darkest most you know horrifying subject matter and yet these people are just so flippantly cha- there's like a pair of directors who are like super annoying and they feel like yeah we made some pretty big changes to the material you know, and there's just, it's just, it's awful. It's so cringe and so terrible. And yeah, they should be in reboot jail for sure. Um, all yeah. right. <clears throat> uh, let's discuss, because this is a big, chunky topic. Obviously, we got a lot of films to get through tonight. Um, but Tom, you mentioned it earlier before we started the clock. What the fuck has been going on with the Halloween franchise in the past 20 years? Tom? Yeah, it's interesting. Uh just simply stated the history of Halloween. It's been a bit of a bumpy ride. I mean, the first one, it's the it's the ultimate slasher film. It was ripped off. It's still being ripped off. It's yeah. it's it it was uh, you know it set the pace for uh, this entire genre, the yeah. slasher film, and it's great. It's Halloween, and so it comes out, and then there's a sequel. It's kind of half-assed. It's kind of like a carbon copy the original, and then he goes nuts, and they do like Halloween is a brand for like a series of spooky tales, and it was the weird. Halloween three, you Season know, the eight witch. more days till Halloween, right? Yeah. Which is amazing. Yeah. But mm-hmm. Not Michael Myers. And then they do this is where I'm not paying attention too much. And then it was like almost like a, uh, a decade later. There's another one. It's kind of like bumpy and Loomis is back. Uh, it's a Donald Pleasance. And then like there's another one and another one. And then suddenly I think Coolio's in one. And there's like <laughs> uh, H2O. Maybe. Yeah. H2O. Yeah. Right. H2O. <laughs> so anyway, so it gets really bumpy uh, as, as, as formerly just being the sequels of um, yeah. you know, the original and they're really running out of gas and it's getting really distorted and it's losing its, uh, it's, 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 um, it's a perspective on like right. what was so special about the John Carpenter film. Right. So then what comes in is really what I think is a very early example of the idea of a reboot and everyone's favorite here, Rob, Robert zombie, yeah. of, uh, yeah. zombie. <laughs> you know, he comes in hard and he says, oh. let me take a fresh look at Michael Myers and the oh. saga of Halloween. So he makes a Halloween reboot, meaning oh, like, uh, let God. me do my spin, do my Rob Zombie yeah. thing to yeah. the story. And um, now I, I happened to catch it on cable, you know, a few years in, in, in the 2000s. And I was really appalled. And uh, this is what I wanted to bring up as much as anything was to me, the big reboot moment is the opening part of his Halloween reboot. 
which shows the the Michael Myers family is like really grotesque hillbilly, yeah, white trash, yep. like incest, screaming, like oh. where's my bacon, you know that kind of thing. Bitch, and yeah, uh, yeah. help me out, guys. You know, well, yeah, it's, right? It's, yeah. it's yeah, in the it's first fucking horrible. In the first ten minutes, you hear tits and cum and bitch, yeah. And, and and well, even I don't like give a fuck if I fuck you fuck you know bitch it's like the hillbilly like Larry Clark version of Halloween for no <sighs> fucking reason yeah now now really now, gross if, if I, caricature I, like a really right. unflattering now, unfair portrayal of like poor people yeah I know even it if makes, it's fair it's like it there are people no like this but but it makes no sense is yeah it makes point, no, sense. no sense because the thing is the film the original Halloween starts this is important to me because yes. like we're he's rebooting okay so the first one. The little boy kills uh, his sister in an otherwise very nice house, mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. a very well-to-do family, of a yep. very yep. straight family, of a very white bread, fully functional mom and dad. Mm -hmm. Dad works in the office and mom's the housewife. And so it's so incongruous that this w boy would be so weird and a homicidal maniac and murder his sister. And that's Michael Myers. So that's right. interesting. So this one, though, I guess he has some logic where he's saying, well, uh, the kid Michael Myers is is justified in becoming a homicidal maniac because his stepfather is so awful yeah. Yeah. that like somebody should put a <laughs> knife in his gut. It's like, so, OK, dumb. so yeah, dumb. it's just so because it's like it's very um, ca causational. It's like, you know, cause and effect. It's like yeah. it's like like you push me too far, pops. I'm going to kill you. And then, you know, um, and everyone and everyone's so gross. It's like, well, why not just murder the, the yeah, gross, everyone. you know, over sexualized teenage sister and stuff. And it's like, you know, what I'm saying it's like it's not just a, a, an anomaly and there's something wrong with that boy is bad. in This otherwise perfect place in yeah. the suburbs. So anyway, so I was like, OK, that's a, a bad choice. It's executed poorly. It's very alienating. And it, it's it's immediately putting a permanent stain on the Halloween uh, well, franchise, it doesn't for lack of a better word. It, 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 so if you guys have some thoughts, yeah, that was it, galling well, to me. Go ahead. Yeah, I, th I think, well, for, I had the exact same feeling you had. Like, watching the original, I always loved how you're in this kind of, like, almost, like, dream up, upper middle class, like, beautiful white picket fence Twin house. Twin Peaks, even. Yeah, yep, and it's yep. like with the carpeting and everything's perfect and you go into Judith's, Judith's room and she's brushing her hair by the vanity and there's something so eerie. And then when that act of violence happens and he's, you know, it's a POV, it makes it that much more shocking and yeah, ambiguous. That it's kids. And that's yeah. the, that's like the elegance of that movie. It's that ambiguity yeah. and not giving the audience this answer right away. I was going to say like, that. Yeah, why is he a psychopath? The fact that like it's an anomaly in that environment is what makes mm -hmm. the movie interesting in the first place. And, and extra creepy. Yeah. Extra, you know? yeah. It, because it, I guess it, what I'm saying is like there's a lot of psychic violence in the breakfast table in the in the beginning of the zombie film like it's it's there's a lot of really grotesque psychic bad energy so it's like this, oh of course this could lead to a stabbing upstairs you know what i mean well you're just a you, dumbass so, person you know but you yeah you, you also said before we hit record you, you 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 were like the opening of rob zombie's halloween is the worst scene in cinema history and it might be <laughs> yeah like yeah. it might well, okay, actually here's every bad scene yeah in every movie <laughs> and then <laughs> Here's, uh, the opening scene to Rob Zombie's Halloween. Yeah, it and is. It's, it's, it's also it, I just rewatched it and I went, I was really right. Like I didn't kind of get anything wrong. I was like, it's long too. Yeah. It's oh. lingering and it's, it's it, no. Actually, the word is it's wallowing. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Marcus, it's also like very test. by the numbers reboot to like do like an origin story. Like it's like that Batman mm -hmm. Begins instinct, you know, like totally. where did like, you know, where did these well, characters come from? As if that is as interesting as like the actual well, that's the, story. Now. That's another sin that he commits in this, which is prevalent in all of the choices of tonight is the idea mm -hmm. of what makes a good film is mystique, especially a horror film, mystique, mm -hmm. restraint. Let the audience fill in the blanks, for Christ's sake. Yeah. And this movie yeah. is structured so fucking poorly that it's literally an hour, a fucking hour origin backstory showing yeah. you everything that you yeah. pictured in your head uh, when, right. when you watched the Carpenter film, you know, and, and they're showing you the step by step, ruining all the mystique that was there mm -hmm. in the original film, not yeah. to mention... <laughs> That <clears throat> then we're we're gonna we're gonna take this really cool, elegant, cool, amazing version of Halloween that was in your head. 
We're going to take that away from you and replace it with new metal Slipknot version of mm, fucking Michael yes. Myers. You said yep. that the other day. <laughs> it's like, Slipknot the movie. Like, what's better than the classic white, uh, you know, what is it? Um, yeah, Wayne the, Shatton yeah. mask. Yeah. Let's yeah. have a, literally a ripoff of a Slipknot yeah. mask, which is like, you know, like the weird slit mouth and like the yes. long stringy hair. And and first of all, it's incredibly dated. Like, hello, <sighs> early two thousands called. They want the mask back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's totally. that's it's just sort of grimly amusing. Bad, to me. but anyway. You know? But yeah, it's Slipknot yeah. core. Yeah, we should move that on. like faux homemade like serial killer yeah, exactly. shit that just looks like so crazy dumb. man's arts and crap. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> so so You're yeah. stuck that's watching the these totally boring actors for a long time too, oh, and like there's like yes. this legitimate attempt to try to make them not one dimensional you know like they're like i'll yeah. make the uh, the slutty totally. teenage girl i'll make her she's like ooh, mom i'm veg i'm a vegetarian now as right. if that makes her have some depth you know That's some character and, yeah. and i think it's like they so they're trying in the script to like make people interesting but they always do it so boring it's across all of these reboots and the, i think it's partially because the actors are like kind of dull you know who are these people but then they the flip side of it is that rob zombie tries packs the rest of the movie with like all of these actors that haven't like that you are familiar with that haven't worked the in horror time. convention so you got people Malcolm well, McDowell and Brad Malcolm Durf McDowell. and Udo well, Kier Malcolm McDowell is Dr. Loomis Dibble Danning know. Mickey Dolenz it's like yeah. it's well it's like uh, a, it's 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 C-list uh, Tarantino yeah it is it, which is very like, dated too trauma and it's the horror convention we were saying too it's like the horror convention yes. roster you know yeah, so it's con. like the yes. fan <laughs> and it's like the fan <laughs> service <laughs> bullshit like oh let's have D Wallace do a cameo for the fans hey is that Ken Forey yeah Dawn of the Dead yeah. As if that gives him like street yeah. cred or like cred yeah. within, yeah. you know, yeah. but it's like, meanwhile, you're butchering the material Awful. by saying that like, you're this fan that's like, you know, paying yeah. homage to this. And it's like, so, it's so grisly and over the top and like grotesque and grating. Yeah. Like it's like the Sherry oh. Moon, whatever her face oh. is, like oh. screaming bad porno oh. actress and oh. everything is so overly violent you and mean like his wife let's be clear <laughs> his <laughs> wife <laughs> of course it's in every film god damn uh, why everyone's screaming she's horrible you know and it's just it's horrible. just like just so <laughs> abrasive to your it's senses such and, a chore yeah. and the, the violence too it's just like when it's you look at the first seen. one like that was what made that movie so effective it's and not beautiful. that violent. it's not, it's not that, that graphic no no it's so oh. subtle and quiet and that's why like when the music comes in it just it has that eeriness and almost like a coldness you know and that's what gives it yeah, that yeah. sense well, he is this maybe one of the mystical ghost kind of yeah. well well ghost i was going to say like one of the most effective moments in the original halloween is when um he's he's weirdly wearing the sheet and then yeah. the boyfriend's glasses mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amazing. and for a long time she's like stop kidding around head or whatever yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. And like he but he's just standing there he and like mm -hmm. we're talking about choices uh evan it's like great like like the timing like linger on it the pacing the music underneath and like and the thing is when you have restraint the choices that you make can mm. breathe yeah you know and they could work yeah. uh they can work like okay but then they can really start working because they yeah. can build you know what i mean because yeah, yeah. they have that and breathing room. also with with in the original with michael myers like just even the way when he's behind the hedge all he's doing is putting his leg outside of that hedge or he's outside the window and laurie's looking with the you know the laundry outside and it's just a moment it's just it's a stillness yeah. and a moment that, that instills we, in the audience this foreboding and that's should, all you need you know we should and then you the watch the rolling. halloween and sorry, and it, but it's it's the violence is it is yeah. so grotesque as well. It's disgusting. It's anyway. agreed. So what yeah. happened next? With the, we got a lot of films to get to. What what, what happened? <laughs> no, next yeah, sure. Okay, so so here's the so, Halloween. Just the, but my Tom's little journey with Halloween in the last twenty years. So that was galling, in all, for all these reasons and more. We could do a whole hour on that. Uh, we you know, should Rob Zombie's Halloween. Yeah, we, we should. So then, so then, what happens in 2018? I and, and Marcus, Marcus and I are big fans of Eastbound and Down. We love mm -hmm. that show. Yeah, you yeah. know, with Danny McBride and um, you know, Definitely. with Jody Jody Hill especially, and then also David Gordon Green. He's not a, mm -hmm. he's involved, but he's not principal like Hill and uh, McBride. Yeah, but we loved that show, and and I was like, wait, 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 those guys are gonna do Halloween. It was the first time I heard. It, I was like, that sounds really fun. Right. Yeah. That sounds like the idea. That sounds right to me. If you're gonna think reboot, it's like they're known for comedy. But they're going to kind of tackle something, and like I know that it's going to not have all these pitfalls of like a Rob Zombie because they have better yep. taste. So anyway, so I saw I watched the first one, 2018 one of the trilogy, 
I think it starts off pretty good. Light yeah. years better than Rob Zombie. What's that? Or Halloween Kills? Is it Halloween Kills or Ends? What's the fuck? Uh, I don't remember. It okay. might just be called Halloween in 2018, the okay. first of three in oh, the trilogy. Okay. So anyway, so it starts, and uh, there's this scene that's pretty effective. It's that woman's being killed in the um, the bathroom at the gas station. Oh, yeah. Right. And, it's pretty good filmmaking, you know, it's it's okay. Um, and then, so I liked it okay. And then, like, the second one comes out, and I'm like, uh-oh, like the one from two years ago or something. And I was like, uh, like, well, evil dies tonight. And it got very weird and stupid all of a sudden. <laughs> uh, especially, it kept going in the middle, and it became, there was, like, a mob. And I think there was all this kind of, like, MAGA you know, like no. Jews will not replace this kind of maybe messaging, <laughs> like about like groupthink and uh, mm. mob mentality. You guys remember that? Like, yeah, I do. I, I do. <laughs> like, it's like a long scene where they like like stalk and kill this guy in the hospital. Like they think is 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 uh, Michael Myers. It's about hysteria and mob mentality. And I was like, you didn't get away with that one. That sucks. And like uh, it, was, it was okay. And then the third one comes out, and I'm like, I don't have any faith in the third one that much, but I'll do it because it's wasn't that bad to go through two. Now, the third one happens. I'm not alone in this. It was, um, it's infamous. And the word here is, is, is Corey. Okay. You guys know the third? That's I didn't Halloween. see it. No, I, I haven't seen it yet. I'll just, okay. I'll be very brief about it. But, um, so anyway, what happens is, I guess this is a spoiler. Sorry, everybody, but it's like, uh, it's not a year ago. Um, so you, it's supposed to be the showdown between, uh, you know, what's her name? Laura Palmer. Laurie. Is that her name? Laura, Laurie Strode. Laurie. Oh, yeah. Laurie Strode. Strode. <laughs> anyway, so Laura her, Palmer. Michael, right. This is the big showdown. Like, she's like getting buffed up in that kind of alien, Sigourney yeah. Henry kind of trope. You know, it's kind of boring to me. Uh, but uh, she's getting ready for the big battle. And you think the whole film, when you're going into Halloween Ends, the last of the trilogy, like, like they're going to duke it out. This is it. This is like an, an hour of back and forth. But then suddenly the film starts and it's like a sulking. Twilight ripoff teen drama. Oh, Whoa. That's what it is. And I was, Oof. I really thought, like, did I like touch the remote and the channel change? <laughs> you know, to like, <laughs> and like, and so, so, and I'm not the only one. I Googled this the second I watched it, and everyone's like, fuck Corey. This is a nightmare. So it's really bad. And, and they're getting it wrong in like a, they're getting it wrong in the ambitious way where they think that they have uh, a lot to say and they could mm. use this as a vehicle. Yeah. But there's also cynicism. Marcus like was saying, it's very cynical. Yeah. I think they were trying to appeal to the fan base. Like, let's make this for like 16 year olds. There's a lot of teen romance. Yeah. Also, mm. the last thing I'll say is um, these guys are getting old because in Halloween, they're adhering to reality as far t temporarily. So like wow. at this point, Michael Myers is like like at retirement age. You know what right. I mean? <laughs> He's like 80. Seriously, so no. it's, it's, yeah, so all I think is just like, oh, my knees are giving out. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on. Let me go upstairs, and then I'll kill you. You know, it's just like uh, you know, Stupid. it's just it's just he seems very old. Right. So, uh, so anyway, there's a part of the movie where this young kid who also becomes a murderer beats up uh, Michael Myers, and you, you don't want to see that. He's no. like getting his ass kicked by this guy no. in a sewer. And it's like, what is happening? <laughs> you know. And uh, anyway, so it, it's just I guess what I'm saying is that was a that was a journey of guarded enthusiasm confusion and then just big disappointment and i was like fuck you guys reboot yeah. walk out reboot you know? walk <laughs> out. that's my little halloween joke. <clears throat> oh my wow. god it is like the david gordon green ones left me feeling very very empty um oh yeah sure. because i did the same thing i got it's funny i was on set of the first one because my friend plays oh. the, po the podcast guy oh, and he no. yeah and he was like he like had me come down to set he's like you, she has to come. So, so I would I hang out sure. with him. Did you walk out? And of he set? was like, yeah. and it was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I walked off the set. A reboot walk but, in on. But it was like funny to cut. Yeah, cameo. let's get this out of the way. <laughs> free po, but, free pro walk. Out. But like, I could see all the machinations of the way that they were trying okay. to like manipulate this for the fan base, like trying ah. to justify the reboot as something that was like genuine, you know. And like, right. I could see that working on all levels. Like they had the original stunt man guy who played michael okay. myers and they kind of were pretending that that's who was playing michael myers mm -hmm. in the movie and they were promoting it that way mm -hmm. and like fang yeah, fangoria and all the interviews mm -hmm. and like i went on set the dude's just sitting alone like he's like hey and like he you know he's like not actually doing mm -hmm. that he's not but, playing a michael yeah right. it's just, yeah it's window window dressing yeah it's window well, I remember dressing. You're the same was thing with chewbacca in the star wars reboots mm -hmm. you know yeah. yeah there you go Interesting. Yeah, so no, but but just to put a button on all this, it's like um, 
uh oh shit, I forgot what I was gonna say, but it's like uh I remember that um that whole wave where it's like, okay, like really what they were saying it by not saying it, like Rob Zombie was conspicuously like uh uh indirectly referenced. It's like that was so egregious and so insulting. We promise you we will not make those same mistakes. Right. You know? But right, then they right, started right. making new and different new ones. That's mistakes. kind of yeah right, right different mistakes yeah and so, it was like it was lazy too i just felt like even the teenagers like it just felt really like rote and lazy and not yeah. interesting and i don't yeah. know so i hated it but yeah, yeah it made me feel empty Terrible. and horrible um yeah. all right empty's let, a good word let okay. me throw down quickly on my reboot walkout and then let's go to marcus's uh field trip uh right after that um <laughs> uh marcus went on a little um assi- one fucking hour assignment um but um okay Here's my reboot walkout because this is a a reboot and I fucking walked out of it and it wasn't just any screening. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't just buying a ticket at your local theater and walking out of this movie. No, it was walking out of the world premiere screening. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> this movie. That's pretty baller. It was world premiere. Walk walk out. Out. <laughs> <laughs> oh it was, man. God. And I, this made me so fucking mad. I was red wow. hot. I was hot. This got me fucking hot. <laughs> Do <dude>. it. <laughs> And Let's I don't go. even really have that much reverence for the original, to be honest. But this just knowing what the original is and how fucking, sure. you know, sake, special it is in many ways. And then just what this person sure. decided to do with it. I'm talking about the Evil Dead remake from whenever the fuck that was. 2013. I don't know. Dude. So, yeah, <laughs> I'm at I'm at South by Southwest and uh, it's premiering at midnight. And uh, somehow somebody scared up a ticket and was like, you want an extra ticket to the premiere? I wasn't planning on going. I had no real interest, but I was like, okay, sure, fine. And, you know, I was much more of like just a judgmental asshole back then, more so than I am now. I was, I was worse, I would say back then. So, (laughs) right on. um, But when, and so when I saw the director walk out in a very tight suit, you know, (laughs) that that was very trim. (laughs) Are there pictures? And uh, I wish, I wish. And 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 like I noticed, he had a very athletic frame, and mm. uh, and and he had like kind of pecs, like you know, he kind of had pecs, you know, from the gym. Definition. And he had definition, and I and I already knew that this movie would fucking suck balls if because uh, right. there's no way it's to, it's it's fucking statistically near impossible if you are a traditionally attractive fit person, you cannot make a good horror movie. Like that is just not statistically right. possible. <laughs> That's the okay. Eli Roth principle, right? Yo! You, you can't. There you go. Yeah. You can't. <laughs> you have yeah, to be yeah, a exhibit. basement dweller, you know, an overweight basement dweller to like understand, you know, the darkness, man, of and the course. fucking, you know, the <laughs> otherwise touch. you're a tourist, you know, you're yep. a fucking tourist. So that was where my right. judgmental ass brain was before this thing started. And I was like, oh, this is going to be fucking terrible because fucking peck guy is up there. And then um, <laughs> three minutes into the movie, I think it's, I rewatched it the other night. I think it's actually three minutes in uh, is when we see the first atrocity, which is whoever the production designer behind this fucking movie is, is just also should be in reboot jail. Uh, you see the Tibetan Book of the Dead, okay? And let's just, let me be clear. The, the original Evil Dead movie, you know, it's not like... Remember when we talked about in the Movies We Hate Part 2, the last one, about the Suspiria remake and how it's like... Sure. It's, not, it's yeah. not like the original Suspiria was a story worth rebooting. It's mm-hmm. all about mm-hmm. the style and Goblin yeah. and Argento right, right, right. and the colors and everything, right? Mm-hmm. So Music, Evil Dead colors, is yeah. similar. It's not an amazing story. It's all about this lightning in a bottle, indie DIY, run and gun filmmaking, right at the boom of home video. And you could make a movie for you know 20 grand and come up right. with all these tricks. And mm-hmm. that's what it's, yep. that's the spirit of it, right? So, yep. that's yeah. True. So the haunted cabin in the woods story is like the most trod upon right. of horror tropes of, right. any, of any story. Right. Fairy right. Tales. right. So, but you know, in the original evil dead, you have the Tibetan book of the dead, right? Which shout out to the anchor Bay DVD box set, which looked like the fucking book of the dead. Back I the have day. it still. Yeah. It's I the have. best. It's the best DVD <laughs> ever. I have but the it, fleshy thing. It's yeah. the best. Ugh. But anyway, so they show their version. Homeboy shows his version, what he got, man, for the fucking Tibetan Book of the Dead. And as soon as it's you open it, of course, and you see it three minutes into the movie, it's got new metal slipknot etched in 
uh, uh, lettering that says motherfucker. Oh, oh. Motherfucker. What? In it. Yeah, that, it says that word. Literally? It says motherfucker, yeah. and then it says like kill, killer, like bitch, bitch, bitch yeah. and motherfucker oh, in it. God. I'm just like, this is supposed to be like an ancient the forbidden text. words. Yeah, you know? it's supposed to be from like uh, yeah, 1000 BC. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah what exactly. What the fuck? When did bitch become such a thing to like yeah. put in these fucking horror movies? And then so Unreal. anyway, I'll be brief. But the other, so it was that. And then it was yeah. the fact that everybody's dressed in like American Eagle, you know, uh, fucking clothing. And it's not taking this, you know, movie that's, you know, it has a fun sort of, mm-hmm. you know, comedic sort of vibe, you know, Evil Dead oh, and sure. everything. And instead, mm-hmm. now we're going to make it super bummer about like a junkie. And it's it's about a, oh. uh, someone going through yeah. junkie withdrawals. And it's going to yeah. be like in dirt green, distressed <laughs> color palette. Yeah. And it's just like wait, wait, say, wait, slow down a little bit. Like I can't. you're saying that like it had this kind of like uh, putrid kind of like brown. Oh, well, everything in that in 2013 <laughs> was that kind of like prestige yeah, television, you, green, gray, green color grade, and then like inky, and everything's inky. like miserable looking and just like Underlit. yeah. And so yeah. it's like it's like drowning out all the irreverence out of like what made Evil Dead this fun well, weird. Evil Dead's thing. a comic book kind of comic book. Yeah, and yeah. so it's I mean, like Bruce Campbell. That's it, the, yeah. So it's yeah. getting it like really basic, like flat lighting, right? And then just drop some stupid like Final Cut LUT on top. Right? Yeah, exactly. pretty much. Like, oh, and what? well, they, they're actually trying really hard for like canted angles and like you know they're 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 it's just it's so cringe. And man, I'm I'm just telling you. So it was it was all of that, and I was like, I'm fucking out of here. And I think it was the second showing of the motherfucker inside the book. That was sure. like I can't do this anymore, and I left. I fucking. So you're left. saying you literally walked out. I <laughs> walked out of the world premiere of. The so that's our movie. second official reboot walk out. Yeah. Well, I, I forgot to say I did walk out of Rob Zombie's Halloween, nice. but then I walked out of Halloween Two by Rob Zombie, and I don't know oh, why wow. I went. To you see, went so, back. Sorry. Interesting. I know. I like, back. huh? I Thank went back. you, Honestly, sir. May I have I another? I was remembering today. Yeah, I was right, like, yeah. wait, there was a second. Yeah. Uh, yes. It was. There was a yes. second Rob Zombie Halloween. Yeah. It was, was it like a prequel or something? I it's it it's supposed so... to be the hospital, like in this, how the second one is. So oh, it's yeah, basically right, a, okay. and I walked out of that. I was of devastated. I walked out. I, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway. So, all right. Marcus. RBWOs. All right. <laughs> okay. Marcus, you were you were sent on a one fucking hour assignment. Um I did yeah, I was given an assignment because I unlike the rest of these guys, I just avoid these movies like instinctively. I just kind of know like ah, you know, yeah. I, I'm having a good day today. I'm not ready to ruin that by watching one of these movies. I, I never yeah. watch any of them. So I was really at a loss. So they said, you know, perfect thing is that <laughs> the new Exorcist just came out. So ah. you're gonna go see that. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm out here in front of the AMC. I'm going to go check out this reboot of The Exorcist. So, I don't have high hopes, but I'm going to check it out. It's going to be a piece of shit. Let's go. So, yeah, that's uh, the Simon. David Gordon Green team. Of yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> team it Green. is. The new yep, franchise. Same. Fan, franchise bus does. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Oh yeah. Yeah. I know. So like, I think the, the 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 tight suit guy is going to come up again soon too oh, in this episode, right? Fucking so tight suit. It's guy. kind of a theme going on. But anyway, so yeah, I didn't know beyond the David Gordon Green, uh, you know, uh, Kenny Powers connection. I didn't know anything else going in except that I was probably going to hate it. You know, sure. um, so certain lines, you know, uh, certain certain lines, and will stay with you when you see a movie like this. You know, and there was one for me in this one. Like, there's there's a little girl tied to a bed, a little possessed demonic girl tied to a bed, and a dude basically looks into the camera to another character and says, "Like, have you ever seen anything like this before?" <laughs> you know, uh, it's one of those movies. One of the times time where the movies is talk, talking to itself. You know, and like, uh, of course, yes, we've seen this like a million times because The Exorcist has been remixed. It's so like in culture. Sure. You know, it's mm-hmm. like. Sure. It's a Saturday Night Live spoof, basically, at this point, you know. Sure. It's just so weird that it, uh, they had the audacity to like call it out. You know, it's like, yes, this movie right, is... Right. Of all the things to say. Yeah. Of all the observations. So, um, you know, everyone else in the movie, too, has apparently, you know, uh, seen this before, too, because the moment these little girls start acting weird, everyone Wait, automatically guesses girls? that... Multiple girls. Yeah, yeah, I'll get, I'll get there. Well, yeah, so there's... Um, 
Yeah, there's everyone starts guessing that's a demonic possession like right away, you know, like hmm. um, once the little girls start acting weird. So yeah, uh, there's two there's two possessed little girls. The best thing I can say is it's very unfocused. There's two possessed little girls. There are seven exorcists oh, in the exorcist oh scene. God. Uh, one, I think maybe even eight, because I think they, they do add another person like halfway through the exorcism. Oh, um, it's It's got two kind of big stories. The first 45 minutes is basically a missing person story. You might as well be watching like 24 or something like, where are these little girls gone? You know, like lost in the forest somewhere. I, I hate it already. Um, oh, terrible. You know, it's like, it's it's definitely, you know, it has entered, entered the panther verse, but that's not the worst crime you know there are a lot of topical references in it you know there's a karen next door oh. um <laughs> later on this this lady is complaining that she didn't learn the exorcist rights because of the patriarchy and she says it kind of like that no. um oh. you know there's yeah. there's a bunch of implausible things that happen there's like an, a woman who's eight months pregnant goes on vacation to haiti you know oh. when you're eight months <laughs> pregnant you don't yeah. even get on a fucking right. airplane yeah. much less go to right. haiti you know yeah. Um, I just don't like it's that. A, it's got one of those horrible situations where the universe is so small, you know, it's like uh, one, the neighbor that they meet is also a nurse at the hospital, but oh. she's also no. an ex nun <laughs> who also did oh. just learn the exorcism <laughs> rites right before the ritual bad starts. Writing. You know? Okay. And then there's another, hold on, another neighbor that is the dad's boxing coach, but he's Their also <laughs> sort of a kooky white Christian guy who also has connections to the world of the black voodoo church. So he brings in like the voodoo lady. He's oh. the link to that, you know, uh -huh. but he's also the dad's boxing coach. It's like that really small shrinking of the world, you know, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. it's so, I, I, you know, I felt I did kind of fail you guys because I didn't walk out, but I did <laughs> fall asleep Fine. like okay, four times. Fine. Yeah, watching the movie, I kind of dozed off. Pass out uh, like reboot, four times. Pass out. Nap time. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it was very, it was very tedious. It was very boring. Very predictable. Yeah. God. There's, you know, the original Exorcist uh, has no music playing yes. throughout, right? So, and then the last yeah, song yeah. drops at the end, right? It's right. Classic. Yeah. Right, right this has music stairs, playing yeah. throughout, of, yeah, course. of course. And then the fucking theme song starts dropping halfway through the movie. It's super mm. annoying, right. you know. Right, right. Um, sure. And then halfway through the movie, guess who shows up? It won't be a reboot unless the original Ellen actors Burstein. start to show up. Yep. Oh, so Ellen oh, Burstyn right. shows up. Oh, I Ellen did not. Oh, wow. I did not expect that to happen. I didn't okay. watch the trailer or anything. Okay. Um, yeah. So uh, you know, reboot, and as soon as she stepped up. in and started saying like, "I haven't talked to Regan in years," you know, oh, <laughs> you know, God. you at that, that point, you that know what the is... very last scene of the movie is going to be. <laughs> Can I say that is a defining it principle. Is. Yes. of reboots the, the the what we're talking about the fan service the wink at the audience yep. via mm -hmm. uh stunt casting oh, it's it, shit. it's it really gets me you know it's it's so it, 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 it thinks so little of us you know yeah, yeah. because they're I really know. true with the um same thing with jamie lee curtis with like the long white hair and she's yes. back it's like yeah. it's as if they're it, they're saying that it legitimizes it, it. does and yeah, it's yeah. Like, it does it yeah, like, yeah. It's, i'm yeah. sorry well, just because yeah yeah there's so much pandering. It's like, let's, okay, yeah. we have to have like some cool teenage girls for the kids and we have to have like, you know, uh, yeah. so oh, we have middle-aged people for like the, the millennials to get into. And then yeah. we got to have the original cast come back for the boomers, you know, and the people that yeah. grew up on this movie. So it's, sure. it's all just trying to, it's not even trying to make a movie. It's just checking yeah. all these boxes. Yeah, right? it's exactly. Back. Um, it's real quick, I, if I can, yeah. if I can, because you guys are going to appreciate this. I don't know if you knew about this. Cut me off if you did. But, uh, there was a little news article that hit recently where uh, writer film critic Ed Whitfield, who was a friend of uh, William Friedkin's, oh. um, <clears throat> they were close up until, you know, RIP, William Friedkin passed away recently. <laughs> and uh, Ed recalled a conversation he had with uh, Mr. Friedkin towards the end of his life. And I'm going to read it here. He said, uh, William Friedkin <laughs> once said to me, Ed, the guy who made these who made these new Halloween movies is about to make one to, uh, one to my oh. movie, The Exorcist. That's right, my signature film is about to be extended by the man who made Pineapple Express. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be I don't want to be around when that happens. But if there's a spirit world I, and I come back, I plan to possess David Gordon Green and make his life a living hell. <laughs> Oh, Are you dude? dude. <laughs> How have you been? And, then he and then he croaks right on time. Right? Yeah, yeah, I know. Oh my god, so that that's is awesome. Amazing. D D D D. You better watch that out, is, bro. That's a great insult. <laughs> that yeah. is amazing. Watch that 
David they'll live Fugin. with that. The last BGG. words for real. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I'm I'm a fan of uh, uh, you know of Eastbound and Down, but yeah. like yeah. everything they've done since Vice Principals, yeah. Gemstones, I'm not into. And yeah. like I think that's a big <clears throat> problem I had with this was like I don't think the filmmaking is up to par as a film. Like. The well, Exorcist feels like a real movie. There's composed shots. There's yeah. ideas. There's oh you know. There's all kinds. Jesus. This yeah. is oh, like, um, you know, this is like. I think TV has raised the bar a lot. You know, TV is like executed a lot better. Everyone knows that now than it was 20 years ago. You know, so yeah. I think. But these guys are TV make TV shows. So this movie feels like a TV show to me. Basically, it's just kind of like it's it's teal and orange lighting hell. You know, oh, everything is yeah, teal and orange. Um. Everything's handheld. They just they don't compose shots. They just have yeah. the camera fucking multiple cameras hosing shit down. They just hose it down literally with the camera and then edit it, piece it together later. It's really jumpy, Jesus. cutty. And then when they do compose a shot, they really overdo it and they like yeah. get the girl's <laughs> face just uh, right. Uh, like, geez, don't move your head scary. too much, you know. Oh, and, and bring up the creepy smile, little girl, and she's yeah. like, you know, like, I really? look like a I yeah, well, it's like uh, a Halloween mask. It's like it's way too over composed. Right. Right. I just, of course, it of course. But it's it's like just to speak to your home your homies, you know, with David Gordon Green and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Once you get to be that famous and that accomplished, that they are like they're hands off, man. They are just a production entity. There's other mm-hmm. people. There's like layers of people between them and this, these projects that they produce. But I mean. can I say something about him yeah. though? Because right. he's he started like. <laughs> super indie guy that was his whole prestige yeah, george washington. thing Very george washington true. and all those right. movies so sure. like the eastbound and down was almost like an anomaly when he started doing that and then yeah. pineapple express but his roots were indie yeah. and yeah, these absolutely. like per, these like personal films so then that adds to the like manipulation of the reboot yeah. marketing of like yeah. oh no we're gonna get like oh, a yeah. really right. smart yeah. indie director that we can trust you can trust Always. and then we're gonna get some prestige right. indie actors Always. what they did with pet cemetery too and and then it's like and then you're tricked even more like oh it, it might have a no, chance well to- that's what got me i was yeah. like uh how bad could it be because it's not somebody egregious it's like Rob Zombie, Rob Zombie or just yeah. an anonymous or hat, anonymous you know? exactly right, oh, right. right. Yeah. Um, well the thing is i i want to be i want to clarify one thing uh it's Jody Hill and Danny McBride's show. He's bound and down. Right. Yes. And then David's like involved, true. but true, he's true, not true. the heart. You're like right. He would you're come right. in and go yeah. out. And yeah, you're right. You're right. And like, um, so anyway. He's sort of a commercial sort of director too. I am too, a huge you know? Eastbound fan, fan. Yeah. And I think the real talent actually lies in Jody and his relationship with Danny. Right. Oh, and, yeah. and David, I don't know. David Gordon Green's just off the reservation. I, right. I don't know what's going on with him. <laughs> Let's let, hearing let's about the moving. exorcist. Yeah, I'll just put weird. a button on on my exorcist experience and saying that like people were talking during the movie. Mm, I didn't sure. care. It didn't bother me at all. Usually that would <laughs> right. just drive me nuts. I did not care at all. And I feel bad for this movie because it's not going to do well. It's opening up against mm. the Taylor Swift movie. Yeah. <laughs> so yes, there's constantly bombastic Taylor Swift music bleeding through, bleeding through the walls of the theater the entire time I was watching. Oh <laughs> my god. <clears throat> oh my god so i might have to have that uh, experience yeah that might be the <laughs> i know all i can <laughs> i'm tempted yeah. all right let's that keep this tempting. let's keep this train rolling here uh here's one here's a fucking major one for me um oh. and i feel bad because again mm. like you know this is involves a very nice person mm. someone who's been very nice to me um, and I, feel, I feel Uh-oh. bad for, you know, we're burning just, I guess bridges. we're burning all the bridges, <laughs> you know, burning bridges tonight. Um, right. but, but basically, you know, studio remakes are, are bad. We know that like they're all bad, but there's also the indie remakes mm. and those are also yes. fucking bad, bro. And, um, <laughs> we're talking about a remake of a film we've covered here on the channel before a uh, shout out. Yeah. So how about the maniac remake? Starring Oof. Elijah Wood, great guy. <laughs> love you, Elijah. We uh, all love Elijah. We, we all, all love you, we man. We Wonderful fucking, man. We love and you. And I get his. It was a surprising love de- and depth of love of horror. Which yes, when I got to know him. Yes, his heart and is in so the right place. I get place. it. He's like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he thought Maniac is one of the greats and wanted to just do something yeah. And yeah. almost as a tribute. So yeah. he's coming from a really great place. He is. Like know? I could also see too, like. Elijah Wood wants to be in a serial killer film like okay like maybe some Luca Mignotta type serial killer thing I'm I'm there I can Ooh. see that you know but mm-hmm. like 
Joe Spinell, you know, grindhouse, yeah. time and place, yeah. you know, type thing. Yeah. Not so much, you know. And mm-hmm. this is coming hot off the heels of the Nicholas Cringe Reffin worship uh, of this era. You know, where, oh where, oh exactly. where, peop- <laughs> where, where, like, the fashionista filmmaking is at an all time exactly. high. That's the first thing I thought of when I watched it. It's, it's, it's like a, a kind of a bygone era. Yeah, it is. Oh, thank God we're over yeah. that. Thank God we're over it. Where it's Trendy, like this hipster like, turtleneck aesthetic. Hipster, yeah, exactly. You know, exactly. and it's <laughs> really bad. And so, um, yeah, because that's what Maniac needed, right? You know, um, but but like the, 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 the hipster casting, makeover, the hipster makeover right. of Maniac. Yeah, it's insane. <laughs> And the casting of Elijah is is it feels Rob like Zombie it. should have done it. They should have oh, Zombie. Take a I, just out it. Out of it. I think the universe would explode. <laughs> implode. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> bitch, motherfucker, bitch. Um, but it's also uh, you know like the casting of Elijah is kind of like AI Mid Journey, you know, fan casting a little bit. It's yes. so weird. It makes no sense. Uncanny uh, Valley, uncanny yeah. Valley. It's so weird. Mm. Um, but of course, like when you have someone who's struggling, like the, whoever the filmmaker—I don't know who the filmmakers are—but they're struggling to be creative and to find themes, you know, within this really trashy grindhouse fucking yeah. time and yeah. place. You know, scalp you, Just motherfucker. Pure sleaze. Grime, pure sleaze. Yeah, sleaze. And of course, they're trying to find the nice little, like the like the poetry in the film, and so they're like I latching know, on to I the know. mannequin. Is like this image uh, that they're grinding yeah. you in the fucking like he works in a mannequin store. He's surrounded by mannequins. He's obsessed with. There's a mannequin in every fucking shot, you know. And it's yeah. just like, it's insane. <laughs> well, you know, and then, he like meets people through mannequins. Like, hey, yeah. is that your work? Like, hey, nice mannequin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So and maniac, too much maniac, yeah, maniac, maniac, mannequin. Um, <laughs> and then can I just well, well, let's stay. Well, can I just one second? The casting. Yeah. Sure. I mean, do whatever you want ever with any yeah. film you know sure. cast however you want yeah but it's 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 a we're talking about you know valleys here there's a huge chasm between the casting of the lead in the first one joe spinell oh my god and uh, uh, yeah. elijah it's like elijah is physically appealing mm-hmm. i've looked in his eyes and i've mm. gone like oh my beautiful god, eyes. like yeah beautiful eyes. electrifying blue eyes or whatever they are mm-hmm. and i was just like um so there's that, and so what I'm saying is like Joe Spinell is repellent, yeah. And there, there's there's a whole implied sort of Bukowski pathology going on, yeah. right? I just like like bearing this like you know hermunculus monsterish <laughs> facade, yeah. just going down the street and buying a sandwich or something, you know. But Elijah Woods like snip to do because he dresses smart too, yeah. Because yeah, he's yeah. kind of a hipster, so he's got like nice sweaters and like a yeah. good haircut, and he's like an attractive young man, yeah. So it's just like it just craters yeah that aspect of maniac yep. the intention and that's yeah. what we were talking about in general like where all these movies go wrong it's like the heart of what made the original special is being annihilated annihilated and it's like why yeah. like you yeah. know like and, it's insane yeah and it's d- did you also catch the dig at the original too that's another trait these movies had they love they love fucking putting their nose up to the originals a lot and did make <laughs> these little digs where <laughs> Of course, you know, if we're modernizing Maniac, let's make sure to put a goth dating website into the storyline, of course. And so that's how, you know, Maniac decides to meet up with this awful goth woman that I cannot watch on screen. (laughs) And um, and uh, she (laughs) she uh, she says to him. Uh, like, you know, it's a blind date or whatever. And she basically says to him, oh, I thought you were going to be fat and with long black hair and greasy skin and full of acne, an acne which star. is a total oh, spinel, spinel dig. And spinel. it's like, geez. Womp, womp. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, they they don't ruin they they don't just ruin Maniac. They also decide to bury fucking Silence of the Lambs while they're at it because they have Q. Lazarus's oh, yeah. Goodbye Horses playing from start to finish. Yeah, really? Their murder yeah. scenes. I haven't yeah. seen yeah. this. And this like Jeez, tattooed like bar wench kind of person is. Oh, oh that's too. weird. Last Isn't call, like Sally. Burlesque, yeah. Sally. Yeah, <laughs> really bad. That's so weird. So bad. Really, the Clerks movie. You want to play that movie as a joke? You know? Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. This ain't a joke. It's kind of, it has been used as a punchline. Can I just say one of the thing? Like, mm. then we can move on. It it is pretentious, you know, uh, because when I first heard of it, it was like you never see the the the, the antagonist. You never see this murderer. It's, it's all POV, POV strictly yeah. speaking. And if you see him, he's looking in the mirror for like two seconds, and it's like okay, and it, and it it doesn't actually it inconsistently commits to that. By it the way. does. It breaks yeah, out of that so a little too it, frequently. It, yeah, it kind of falls because I th- I thought it would have a discipline and be sort of like a fake bad. 
modern yeah. European bullshit art film. Uh, but no, it, it breaks the rule. It gets more broken as time goes on. And so it doesn't even matter. And also it doesn't add up to anything, you know, like necessarily. No. It's just a sort of a stunty thing to say that you're doing. Mm -hmm. you know? Right. It ages really badly. I, the style ages terribly. Terrible. Yes. And it's very, oh. it's just br like, like the brutality too. Like if you're taking the sleazoid 42nd Street time and place out of Maniac, scalping yeah. women Oof. gratuitously on film is not fun um you know and of course yeah, they don't it's like earn the coachella right with scalping it's like, <laughs> yeah like, it doesn't uh which sounds the, the better, atmosphere but... doesn't quite yeah. isn't quite as conducive it's, right it's, it's in a weird way more jarring right you right. know and uh, because uh, yeah. it, 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 I, I had to look away sometimes it, you know? uh, yeah totally. agreed agreed and the last thing i'll say very too unpleasant is it, it ends with the literally the the most the funniest like film school like stupid oh, right. stupid ending it's, where of it's course the lamest it's the lamest funniest <laughs> fucking thing in the world but the original <laughs> maniac is so good when you know the mannequins come to life and they tear apart yeah, joseph yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. and the mom great. And great. It's it's one of the best the best part of the movie actually in this version of course because they've made this kind of twee poetic little you know concept with the mannequins the like children uh, of paradise <laughs> No. Yeah, they like, they they yeah. for the ending when they're tearing apart the maniac, they're pulling mm -hmm. his face off and they pull off Elijah's face and then of course they pull it off and it's just a mannequin face. It is of him. same mannequin. It's a him as a uh, mannequin. Uh, yeah, no, it's like John Cocteau's gore. Like, <laughs> I know. Yeah. What does that mean? It, it was laugh out loud. It yeah, was laugh it was out loud. Out. Pathetic. And he's making a dumb, he has a dumb facial expression. I know. Yeah. It's like a little boy it's mannequin. Like it's like, me? Yeah, I'm me? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. terrible. It's yeah. bad. It's it's really, it's kind of singular because it is, yeah, it's it all is. this stuff. It's it's a reboot. Yeah. It's pretentious art, Nick Reffin bullshit. Yeah. Uh, you know, and it's it's just like it's a really gross, noxious concoction, you know. It's bad. There's, there's, I don't think there's any others like that quite. Yeah, no. it's, it's, it's bad. Terrible. Um all right, let's keep the train moving here. We got just under ten minutes left to to get through some here. Tom, did you wanna actually you know what guys? I need ten CCs of something. Oh, please. I need yeah, ten man, CCs. Need <laughs> I need ten CCs of a good movie here. Just, yeah, just to remind classic losing stat. faith. Okay, here we go. Losing, faith in it. losing yeah. the will to anything, anything. Anything. How about how about ten CCs of this? How about this? How about this? <laughs> oh! <laughs> Yay. There you go. Okay. Yay. All right. Door cool. Slam. You needed that. Yeah. Okay, so Tom. Thank you. On that note, why don't you hit Ooh, us with well, your speaking, next pick? Speaking of. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yeah. All right. Well, you know, Texas Chainsaw is a franchise for like a better term has had a bumpy ride too <laughs> and uh yeah. there was some there was a boring bad 2000s chainsaw reboot Chainsaw yeah. Chainsaw Massacre reboot which is kind of like whatever you know yep. and but uh, there was this wildly fucking stupid one from like two years ago or something and it felt like i was reading about it it was like <laughs> shelved you know it was going to come out and then it just wound up like getting dumped on netflix and stuff but it's like you know shot in belarus or something but it's yeah. supposed to be texas <laughs> yeah. and oh it my really God. they're not making it work like texas <laughs> isn't really adding up in like the landscape you know and um just uh you know we could talk about so many things but it has uh you know, um it back to the uh, fan service it brings back the character what is her name sally the the yeah. final girl yep, or whatever yep, of, yep, uh, yep. she comes back and she's like 70 years old it's another one of those like <laughs> and it's, it's post halloween reboot okay mm -hmm. yeah reboot trilogy because it's just like this long gray-haired woman like <laughs> I'm re I'm here to kick ass and chew bubble gum, and, you know that kind <laughs> oh of thing. My she's got like a bow, like a bow, uh, you know, like a oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, crossbow, crossbow. And it, like it's she's like, like a I'm sequel, ready to right? Some leather face, you know. It's huh? supposed to be kind of a sequel or some shit, right? Isn't that what it's supposed to yeah, be? Uh, yeah, it's a reboot. Yeah, sure, no, right? it's like it's a yeah. sequel and a remake like, um, and everything. all of the above. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, 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 it's it's it is like well, no, it's Sally, you know, yeah, in real time, like she was 20 right. in 1974. It's a sequel, yeah. So. Yeah, so I guess it is sequel. So she's there, and um, she's like, "I'm ready to kick some ass." But I was, you know, you think about it, this is back to what I was saying before. It's like she's like 75 years old, and that means like Leatherface is like 75 years old, and it's just <laughs> this like like geriatric yeah. like <laughs> like spree thing. It's like what it's it's that? very distracting. 
Yeah. Like he's not you do the like you're doing the math in your head like wait this came out like this year it's like Clint they're, Eastwood they're, they're applying <laughs> the reality of time yeah you know so, but uh, the big famous one is uh, like an, another thing we were bringing up is uh, being instantly dated and trying to make it like cool and now there's a great fail of the scene where um, it's all these tourists or something are on like this tour bus and they're influencers. You know, and they all have their phones out and they're all in some Texas small town and like they make a stop for some reason in the small town and of course Leatherface comes on the, <sighs> the bus and starts ch- and like everyone's going like oh my god like look out like he is wh- look, where did you get that outfit you know that oh. kind of thing they're all being they're, like their cell phones are being chained uh, like live streaming right. they're live streaming <laughs> live, uh, streaming. live, live streaming. stream massacre uh, oh. it's a it's big, just like real life. big cringe insult to the legacy it's kind of everything it's like oh, wow. cringe it doesn't it doesn't trying to be funny it doesn't work oh. uh it's instantly dated um that's the big thing the rest of it's just like <sighs> insulting generally to your intelligence and it's but it's another indie director it's another indie Chainsaw. sundance Sorry? it's another sundance director doing oh, oh it is wow. it is yeah he's yeah he's got he's What's got a up? great sundance director name by the way david blue garcia is his name um oh, yeah. but like mm. it, it, you know it's it's doing this again like this poster you know it's like doing this kind of like art trying to be art house mm-hmm. yeah. take on this but it's just such a fail you know on, on the plus side i i heard that the writer producer is really buff and he's got a great like skinny suit skinny suit. <laughs> yeah. the same guy he probably it's does. the same guy that did the evil dead oh no it's buddy from, uh, evil dead yeah and what? he's working well, there you on go. He's working on the Alien sequel right now too, you guys. Wow. Are you are, are you whole, making this up? I'm he's not. A, I'm not. This wow. is the guy's whole shtick. It's like Wait, he's a serial. I'm the reboot guy, weird. I guess. No, he wow. was yeah, involved in the Ronnie. writer <laughs> producer. <laughs> same guy. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah. Wow. Yeah, he's well, tight and, and with that track record, I mean, I, I, I'm speaking objectively here. That new Texas Chainsaw, it's just not good. Like in right. all on all fronts. That's sure. just. An insult yeah. to humanity, yeah. to people who watch films, to Texas Chainsaw yeah. Massacre. It's just like, it doesn't work. Right. And it's incredibly obnoxious uh, in its failure. Right. It's so. It, see it. The, Starts Friday. The, the balance of, you know, just this happens to all these reboots where it's like they made one good movie called Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 1974. Mm-hmm. Right. And since right. then, there's been 35 different adaptations of its sure. sequels, yeah, it's TV sure. shows, yeah. reboots, and they're all unwatchable yeah right. well, it's, it's it's that yeah. you know what that term uh, the term i think of uh, marcus is you know um george lucas's wife used to always say that uh for george uh star wars was this inverted pyramid right you know like right. you're saying it's like the yeah. tip of the pyramid is this yeah. just this one film this mm. one director made yeah, you know yeah. and, right. but then this in, insane yeah. out of control empire world yeah. butterfly effects and influence yeah, the yeah, butterfly. Yeah. What, it, is, what it, it morphs it, into has nothing yeah, to do right. with the, what it is. Right, quick. right. We're getting very afield, you know, from yeah. it. Yeah. Um, it's, it's bigger than it's, and it's much bigger than Star Wars. And it's much bigger than Chainsaw, the first one. Sorry. Yeah. To and it's, the... it's kind of, it's not just horror, you know. So, right. Sorry to be it's Mr. Clock here, uh, just because yeah. we got three and a half minutes left. Let's Ramey, it. take Let's us go. home with your pick. Oh, God. You want to talk. Oh, my God. Which one? It's up to you. I just want to get just get this in real quick because I watched the Carrie r- r- okay, remake yeah, yeah, yeah. just you know the other day as for research for this, and this is a good example of a bad instinct is the idea of oh yeah the iconic moment where the blood falls from the bucket on the you know sissy Spacek like the part mm-hmm, that you could mm-hmm. practically do even with resets very simply no no let's do it with a really bad CGI. Like, let's oh. just have a blob of CGI uh, blood. Real flow. Yeah, because you know, that's... Real flow. Oh, that's God. like 2011 <laughs> was missing. Uh, CGI. Yeah. Yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's so bad. Oh, so, it's like so, way so too bad. much blood, right? Yeah, it's... Like. Yeah. <laughs> I think that scene is. I saw this in the movie theater as well. And you didn't. Yep. Not. Yep. And wow. Was also, extremely depressed and. I, I guess I made it through, but I was, you know, was having the blurred yeah. vision. Um, but that ending, like when you compare it to the Brian De Palma, it's like, you know, like that scene is so heartbreaking in the original Carrie. Like, so like it's it's like every time yeah. I like pray, like don't let it happen, and like you just your yeah. heart breaks for this traumatic. William and the, Cat dies, and yeah. oh my god, her boyfriend, yeah, her, her Tommy. Date, her date. And it's it's just like it's it's so 
heartfelt and heart wrenching. And it, it, I showed it to my little sisters last year and they were like, they were like destroyed. And, and the, mm. the director of the new Kimberly Pierce directed the new one. And Boys she don't cry. Talking. New director. She, yes. Yes. And she was oh. talking, isn't that weird? But she it said, like, wow. she was like, you just want to like, root for Carrie at the end to like kill those bass whatever like yeah. get revenge no. and she's like a superhero this is, this and you're like, her no. like Dale, Diablo Cody kind of yes. thing yeah it's this like is, please this that's her- it no it's oh, it's really sad it's like it's a sad it's sad I horror know. you know no, she it's, actually know. it's total it's it, you just feel for it. and also just I'm sorry but uh, Sissy Spacek is a singular oh, actress force uh, the way she looks and of yep. course she's a monster actor she's yeah. like and so she's her face is just selling the yeah. joy the happiness oh, of the moment right before heartbreaking, the, heartbreaking. The, the blood and the vengeance and, this, and it's just a tour de force performance tour de force. And it's she, yeah. like one of a kind and that other gal is just like treading Oof. water just Chloe Grace up, Moretz you know? who's also in the Suspiria remake oh, and was yeah. also in the Let the Right One In remake and then oh, yeah. they just throw her in this shit Th- and I it. think she's pretty, pretty terrible oh my like, god but, but like literally the director says in these junket interviews I encourage everyone if you're not convinced these movies are bad Go watch the junket interviews with all these yeah. filmmakers, and then you really know point. how they have yeah. no, f- all their instincts are off. And the fucking director of the Carrie remake, and she says, This is her superhero origin story. And it's like, you oh, don't understand God, that no. this is a fucking traumatized individual. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. It's a tragedy. It's a, tragedy. It's a, tragedy. It's a, tragedy. Mm-hmm. It's a fucking tragedy. You're not, you're not jumping up and down and, and like it's a school shooter. Yeah. For, it's yeah. not story. girl boss time. Not yeah. at all. It's yeah. just like a really wow. sad story. Yeah. So People only get comic books now. They don't get the Shakespeare tragedy thing anymore. Right? Yeah, exactly. That, so, is, that is telling. Anyway, Rami, sorry we left Poltergeist on the table, but hey, there's going to be there's probably so many more left on the table. Y'all know. We'll be walking out again. We'll be walking out. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, and that was uh, your one fucking hour on the horror movie reboots. The reboot walk out. Come on, let me hear it. Walk out. Reboot. 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 Walk out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. horror, horror movie reboots and walkouts. Uh, so thank you so much uh, for tuning in for one fucking Toba. That was a lot of fun. Um, we got yeah, one episode great. left, guys, for the month of October. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, yeah. that's, of course, going to be one fucking hour on Last House on Dead End Street. Very excited because Whoa. that is a... <laughs> finally, we can talk about something that's fucking legit. You know? Yeah. Right? Tom, tell us. Oh, yeah. I mean, that movie is all... Good or more uh, to, to the point, like more insane choices. It's lots of assaultive nightmare choices, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. an assaultive nightmare. It's There's nothing quite like it. Yeah. It, it really... It really is still packs a punch, and that's hard for something you know from 1972 to do. Yeah, and and should we disclaimer it at all if someone's going to go turn it on their TV <laughs> for the first time before next week? <laughs> a caution? <laughs> caution? Uh, is there a caution? Not safe for work. <laughs> no way. Not safe <laughs> not for even work. Close. No. So, uh, not even close. Um, it's uh, it's not fun. Yeah. It's a it's 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 a PCP horror. <laughs> there you go. That's a good way of putting it. We talked all night tonight about distressed jeans horror. Mm-hmm. This is PCP yep. horror. Um, mm-hmm. So uh, we're going to be getting into that last house on Dead End Street next week. Uh, you know, also Baby Got Backstory on that episode for sure. All the you know the weird creative yeah. force behind that movie. That's a story in and of itself. And we yeah, have special yeah. guest Ant Timpson all the way from New Zealand who's going to be joining us. Uh, very excited about that. Who's going to be talking yeah, uh, yeah. last house on Dead End Street? So definitely uh, be forewarned if you want to get your pre-watch in, or you might not need to. You might want to just sit back and enjoy the the ride because you know we're going to cut it up for you and we'll uh, show you what's all crazy about it. Um, <clears throat> and then at the end of next week's episode, guys, we're going to unveil what November has in store for everybody. We're going to switch into a whole new program. Uh, and we're starting it off with my belated birthday episode. So right. remember, we had it. I mean, my birthday was back in September, but we were in the summer program. So I decided to push that down the line. So my belated birthday we're like episode. deep in 1979. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Uh, couldn't stop that train. Couldn't can't stop that train. So but we it's got all going to be Thanksgiving themed 90s movies. Oh, for, uh, yes. 
Well, planes, I'm trains. for the holidays. Uh, the family stone, I think. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sarah Jessica Park. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, yeah. So stay tuned for whatever the fuck we're doing in November. It's going to be very exciting. Um, right. And what else did I want to say before? We're, oh, I, I fucking might need 10 cc's of something before we wrap oh. this up. Oh, sure. Um, that you was, got anything? Hook us up. That was uh, dispiriting. Uh, yeah. Going over all this Do film. we need like 10 cc's of another just great horror film? Sure. Like the, sure. You, you want something? All right, here we go. Yeah. How, about yeah. How about this? How about this? like some ice cream, doc? <laughs> <laughs> There Perfect. You go. Mm-hmm. There it's like we a go. defibrillator a actor in a horror film. <laughs> yeah, defibrillator yeah. kind of bring you back yeah. to life. It does. It does. Right. Oh. So. Yeah. All right, everybody. Well, before we wrap things up, uh, make sure if you're in the Los Angeles area, check out Tom and Marcus live at EXP TV. They're going to be wow. at <laughs> wow. They're going to be at the Phyllis. Wango yeah. Tango. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be at the Philosophical Research Society uh, the last two Tuesdays of October. October 24th and October 31st tickets Mm -hmm. description. It's in the description of the goddamn video or the podcast. Um, If you want to support us, the one fucking hour show, or you want to check out our new audio commentary track on Holy Mountain feature length, all two hours of fucking Mm -hmm. Holy Mountain. You want to hear us Mm -hmm. uh, cut it up over that. Head over to patreon.com slash one fucking hour. It's just five bucks a month. You get all the access to the bonus episodes. And of course, 24 hour early access to all of our shows. Uh, we appreciate all the people that have signed up thus far. Super, super awesome. Um, and we're going to continue to roll out yeah, some man. bonus shit, man. Um, all right, everybody. That was the show. Um, super excited. Um, but, Rami, as you know, we can't leave the people without their what? Mom. What was that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, what? I didn't hear that. Oh, what, Rami? Moment. <laughs> Moment. <laughs> I'm sad. All right, everybody. Back and forth. <laughs> Have a good Call and response. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mocking <laughs> bird. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. All right, everybody. Have a good rest of your week, and yeah, we'll see you. Happy Halloween. Yep. Happy Halloween, man. We'll see you next week for the final mm. one fuck October. Bye, guys. All right, guys. Take care. Talk soon. See you later. Bye bye. Bye. Hopefully, it's a suspense thriller because you've got this girl who has these powers, so it's a superhero origin story. Mm -hmm. And hopefully, which I think when the movie really kicks in, is when you start saying, I want her to get the revenge. Yep. That to me is the key. (laughs) How do you get the audience to root for and enjoy the revenge? Right. And I think that that really does happen with Chloe. You just want her to get them back. Yeah. All right, uh, just getting out of The Exorcist reboot. And uh, just about as bad as you expect it to be. I didn't walk out, but I did pass out a few times. Fell asleep a little bit here and there. It all felt rather pointless. Um, And uh, weirdest thing, weirdest takeaway is that apparently it takes place in the same universe as Exorcist 1, but not in the same universe as Exorcist 2. So that's weird. Anyway. Motherfucking goddamn orange peel beef. That was wicked, man.